Well, hey there, it's Sandy Alnock and it's World Watercolor Month, but I'm going to color water instead of watercolor. So I'm going to show you how to make this using an alcohol marker, uh, some reinker, a gel pen, and some gouache. And you can also do this in alcohol inks, and I'll talk about that as we go, but I'm going to be demonstrating this in Copic, and we're going to do it on Yupo paper. So let's get started. Yupo is a synthetic paper, and this is different than a lot of surfaces you may have used if you have only used cotton papers. This is not cotton. And what I'm doing here is putting some of the ink onto the paper and then smooshing it around while it's still wet with a cotton ball, just to cover the surface that I want to turn into this particular background. And I had to do it section at a time so that it would stay wet long enough because alcohol inks are gonna dry relatively quickly on this paper. You might also try regular alcohol inks if you don't have a marker that has reinkers because like Olo markers don't come with bottles of reinker, but you can also just scribble on the page and then move it around while it's still wet. So here I'm using some alcohol. This is isopropyl alcohol in a little bowl and tapping it into some of the areas just because I want to have some texture in here and then have something to put all of those striations of the water into. Now, once you get done with this phase, you could go right into the white part and skip over the next step that I'm gonna do. But I used a B16, which is a kind of a medium, medium lightish kind of color. And I went for a B18, just a little tiny bit darker in the same color family so that I would have related colors and they would work well together. Because I wanted to have some areas in here that got darker and then some areas that got lighter and kind of indicate some layers in this because when I was studying a whole bunch of pictures and I was doing a bunch of sketches in my stone sketchbook, I found that there were a lot of places where you could see little threads of shadows underneath the water, like that were hitting the sand, depending on how deep the water is. So if it's more shallow, you're gonna see those little shadows at the bottom. And sometimes you just see little rocks or little fish or you know things growing on the bottom. So you'll get a little bit of different value, but don't go too wide in value because as soon as you get really stark changes between light and dark, you end up with something that's not gonna look really like water. But once I got some of that color put in and mushed it around a little bit with my, uh, my cotton ball, I thought, I. I just want to spend some time with my markers and do some negative drawing. So this is kind of like my normal doodling, but in reverse, because I'm drawing in the negative parts in between the lines so that the light parts are the ones that show up. Now I did try this using a colorless blender to lift color out of a darker. And I found that to be a little bit more painful, partially because my alcohol marker, my colorless blender turned really seriously blue. And while that doesn't destroy the marker, you can still use it. And it, once you scribble that color off, it shouldn't transfer into anything else. It just bothered me to be dirtying that nib quite so much because it was a bit extensive. And since I'm a doodler at heart, this made me happy to just sit and let my mind go because it has been one heck of a week. I did the books this week and that is never a good week to make artwork because... I get all sorts of things running through my head, like, how am I gonna do this? What am I gonna do? So this just let me let all of that go and just set it all to the side so I could just make lines. And for me, sometimes that is what art does for my heart. It takes me out of my head, out of my thinking, out of my worries, out of you know family stuff that's going on. It takes me out of all of that and puts me into a much better headspace because I'm just doing something with my hands and I don't know if you're like me but that really helps me a ton so I grabbed my white gel pen and I'm going into some of the areas that I left lighter and I left wider spaces open so there's more light coming through and top them off with some of this gel pen and just doing some scribbles 
Now I'm making some of them thicker scribbles, some of them thinner. You're going to see I'm going to blur these out as well. But I just wanted to have some of the smaller little lines on here because I'm also going to thicken them up later. And I'm going to thicken them up in a special way, but I wanted to test it on this section of the whole piece before I expanded to the entire one. So I only did even the background on this section. But it kind of looks like a cool fabric already, which was just kind of fun to see what I could find image-wise in all of these shapes. But you can see there's some areas that are more dense with the darker blue color, some that are more open, and the, the little spidery lines kind of crisscross. They go in between. The shapes of all of those openings when you're looking at water this way are all different. There's some that are going to be more round, some that are more hexagonal, some will be long skinny ones. There will be lines that are parallel to each other or crisscross and twist. So you can basically do anything. Like there's no rules here. If you get the values right and so that it has that feel of water, whether you're going to use blues like this or use some blue green colors, that kind of thing, it's going to look gorgeous. So I recommend trying it. You might not want to try it a big piece like this. This is on the large side, but if you're trying to do something small for a card, it might be fun to just do something like this. So I finished all of the, the value differences, making darker values around the whole page and got back to my gel pen. Now this is a Uniball Signo gel pen. I know some people don't like it. Use whatever gel pen you like that you have. I do have another video that talks about how to get it started if you have one that's stuck. So I will link that in the, uh, the doobly-doo down below. If, you're, if you have some of these pens that don't work, because I found that the, some tips that helped me to try to get my pens working. But generally, I just keep a big cup of them, and they're just, I, I grab one, and they usually work around here. I don't know why it is that I don't have trouble and other people do, but that's how life goes, right? Art supplies just have a mind of their own. I even asked once to try to get people to tell me what elevation they were at. I thought maybe that was it or what their humidity was like, I could never figure it out. So use whatever gel pen you got. So now I'm adding gouache to it. Now gouache is an opaque watercolor and opaque watercolor will, you know, go over top of this. You can already see in the time that the gel pen went on that it is getting a little bit more bluish and the gouache is really whitish. And part of that is because the gel pen absorbs the color underneath. So it's kind of transparent-ish. And so I'm getting a nice, uh, I guess, a difference between those white lines that are turning bluer and this nice white gouache popped on top. Both of those mediums, though, are water-based. And the alcohol ink underneath all the Copic marker, that is not water-based, which means I can do some special technique things with painting on top of an alcohol ink base. And that means I can soften these lines because this is water soluble. If you were to use acrylic instead of gouache, because you know not everybody has gouache, but if you're using acrylic, you'll need to do the next step quicker. So you'll need to do it while the paint is at least damp because you need to be able to move it. But the gouache will stay movable. So you can do this part one day and then go do the next step another day and be just fine. But I'm just kind of slapping it on there, making different shapes, different lines, and thicker and thinner. And then I used a baby wipe. Baby wipe has a little bit of moisture in it wrapped around my finger to just tap on top of these lines. I'm not pulling, I'm not dragging, I'm just tapping so that those lines look like they start to blur. Because when you're talking about water, especially this kind, the water is just moving and flowing in you know wherever it is and it's not going to be sitting still being really sharp everywhere there's going to be some places where i'll have a sharp edge but softening like this is possible because the alcohol ink is not moving and the gel pen and the gouache are able to move but as i said if you're using acrylic just make sure you start doing the blurring step before it gets dried now this kind of a technique would be awesome for making things like card backgrounds. You could use it for making marble, 
just change up the colors and maybe do less of the spidery lines. You can make marble. You could do tree bark this way. And I am probably going to play with this idea somehow in my sketchbooks for a while because it was just a lot of fun and very relaxing. And I just love me some doodling. So there are the simple supplies. I'm going to link them in the doobly-doo as well as over on my website, on my blog. And if you're interested in checking out the World Watercolor Month sale on my page. There's a coupon code for watercolor classes, but there are also some non-watercolor classes at the bottom of the page. So go check it out. Use the coupon code. Let's raise some money to help kids make art. And I'll see you again in my next video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.